It was worth the risk, and I needed to wear that uh, I voted sticker. Unfortunately, it has fallen off since. Um, so, oh, there I'm we go. Prepared. That's right. I almost, I almost snagged that from Jared's place when I was visiting him uh, last weekend. You know, I actually, saw it. the few times I voted in person in Philadelphia, I never got one of you these. Didn't stickers. get the sticker? Really? No, never. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> but I've also never worn the sticker. Mm. I actually, if if we would have recorded in person, I was going to bring it over and actually stick it on during the episode. I guess I could nice. still stick it on now. Put it on your forehead. Show the world. I voted, everyone. <laughs> you know what that means? I'm better than you. Actually, it kind of does. Does it? Are you sure? It's no, a bold I'm just statement. Whoa, I'm just kidding. What, what about those people that can't vote, Jared? That are international students. They they gotta yeah, hope that convicts. we make a good decision. Ex convicts, you know, right? All right, let's do this. There was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that went into that introduction song, Jared. <laughs> a lot of tears, surprisingly. A lot, yes. <laughs> you should have heard a Jared's weird amount of harsh blood critiques. Too, actually. <laughs> yes. You know, Jared, Jared like Ch- expects perfection, <laughs> and so we try to give it to him, folks. <laughs> yeah, it was for me. This is not That's good right. enough. That's right. <laughs> Thankfully, Chris Blaker came in, saved the day with that bass yeah. line. Without him, who knows where we would be today, Jared. So shout out to you, A lot more blood, Chris. probably. Probably a lot yes, more tears. Yes, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Untranslatable Podcast And today we are going to be talking about all things voting uh, I am coming to you from my local voting booth For all of our viewers out there on YouTube uh, Tuning in, you can see with my lovely background here Was not easy sneaking into the voting booth today to uh, get all the equipment set up but I think it's well worth it because we are talking about something very, very important today, which is uh, uh, voting in the United States. We'll talk kind of about how it works. You know, these ballots are a little confusing, at least the ones we saw here in Michigan. Uh, and we're and I at least have some fun facts about voting as well. So we'll be talking about those today. And of course, we'll be bringing you some amazing untranslatables later as well. So stay tuned. But without further ado. Uh, my man who has officially voted, he's got the sticker to prove it. Uh, my buddy Jared, what's going on, Jared? I mean, if you're not wearing the sticker, did you even vote? It's it's like, you know, did you take a picture? Did you go to that fancy restaurant or did you really do that workout? It's the same premise, right, Jared? Exactly. This is the, the yeah, this is the mirror mirror gym selfies of stickers <laughs> <laughs> do you think everyone the needs sticker, to know <laughs> do you think the sticker jared uh gets people uh motivated and excited to go vote mm, no but i hope that it shames people that don't vote you know a little more mm. than uh no i actually i don't think it does anything now that i sit now that i think about it <laughs> <laughs> i think it just makes the people feel better that wear it i've actually never i, I as i i told you this i don't know if we were recording when i told you this but i've never worn i've never gotten a sticker i don't think i've ever gotten a sticker the first time i've gotten stickers was when i moved back to michigan and that's when i started doing mail and voting and then it's mm-hmm. like what so then i just have to it's it's weird it's weird wearing a sticker in that situation, you know. It's not like I'm leaving it and just putting it on on the way home. But it's maybe like, you should be. No, I'm making know. a um, noted effort to put it on at the beginning of the day and then go nowhere, never leave my home. <laughs> right. So when you put it on the window to your door, Jerry, just just letting the people know. Yeah, you know? that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let the world know. Um. Yeah, but uh. So we are doing an episode about the voting process and stuff. You're right. It is kind of confusing. Though. Let me ask you, though. Did you do the proper preparation for an episode like this and watch the final presidential debate the other day, last week? Well, if you consider that proper preparation for today's episode, then I am fully unprepared today, yeah. Jared. I did. I saw bits and pieces of it, but uh, I. what was I doing that evening? Was I teaching? No, it was... Was it yesterday night? Was it Thursday? And just about or anything Wednesday? is probably a better use of your time. <laughs> that's that's when, fair. When did, the, I, did the muted microphones make a difference, Jared? Well, I'll say this. I watched um, maybe 10 minutes at most of it. Okay. And, at the, and at that point, they actually didn't really have to use the muted microphone. Uh, <laughs> I will say this. Trump did turn into a, a sign language expert. Because oh, like you know, it's not he wasn't able to interrupt. You know, I think he, he was very aware that he can't interrupt. But there was a lot of like you know where he does like his 
Oh, he always has oh, like yeah. his yeah. Whoa there. Whoa yeah, there. he has like hey. his hand motions. Right. Right. So he was doing a lot of hand motions. But then I was watching this and I was literally watching it and I was like, first of all, this is making me angry again. Mm, that's a <laughs> and surprise. I've already voted anyway. It's not <laughs> also right. even if I hadn't voted, it's not like I was an undecided voter. That was using this as a final opportunity to figure out who I was going to vote for. You know what's interesting? So I'm just like, I don't though, need to do this to myself. It's it's interesting that there are still so many undecided people in the states. Are there? Yeah, I There's don't believe. More, that. More for some reason, I can't think, believe those Jared, people. More than you think. You have a number for us? I I, I could Google it and find out. Oh for no, the you, way you were saying that made it seem like oh, just you wait. <laughs> well, well, just you wait, Jared. Let's find out. Let's find out. <laughs> But um, but yeah, I I I think it's ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous, and 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 I couldn't watch it. And I, I couldn't. And it was so easy for me not to, because I was like, I, I thought about you because I told mm-hmm. I did watch the last one, and that one was annoying to me too. And I thought about you saying anything that is really of note will come mm-hmm. up on social media. I'm like that's true. I'm not going to miss yep. anything that really matters. And it was just a lot of people complaining. I, there's nothing even really quote unquote happened it was just a lot of people complaining about the same thing that they always complain about trump right. and, and and biden and it was like yeah all right well i i've already if you haven't seen the sticker everyone i don't i don't need this last debate to really put me over one way or the other so i got sad news for you jared i'm not finding any i'm looking i'm not finding any good solid just numbers on undecided voters but i will tell you according to vox it is lower than in 2016 Mm. So, but, uh, but I guess apparently the, the main Makes thread sense. for a lot of undecided voters, uh, is they think that their vote will not make a difference. Um, which I do uh, think yeah. a lot of Americans, uh, feel so that that's, way. That's, that seems less decided on who you would vote for and more decided, more trying to decide whether it's even worth it to vote or not. Right. True. Um, I, I have some. I, uh-huh. Go, oh, ahead. go ahead. Sorry. No, no, go no. Ahead. You said I first, and I want to hear what you're gonna, you were going to say. I, I will say though, for the for those who are undecided, I kind of see where they're coming from. As in this election and the last election, I think both choices are not great choices. That's just my own personal opinion. You know. Yeah, um, but to I'm me, I'm not a huge fan of either. But to me, it's also kind of obvious, though. Unfortunately, like mm. unfortunately, um, right. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's it. it I, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, no, it seems obvious to me. Or it's like there, it's. I'm not saying I, I, I'm in love with, uh, with either of the candidate or with, uh, like the people I vote for most of the time. I don't know. You were raving a lot about Trump last time I was over at your place. <laughs> well, that was just a tax policy. I that was. I, I just said, oh wow, look, I've never had so much uh, back in taxes. Actually, I don't oh, even that's, know if that's true. true. Well, that two point three million you've been sitting on definitely would <laughs> that take a bigger cut. That twelve hundred dollar stimulus really changed the day. I bought a I bought an <laughs> Xbox three hundred and sixty with it. <laughs> That's right. A couple of fly pairs of Jordans. What are what are what are those those jeans with the uh, oh they're like three hundred dollar pair of jeans? I forget like a true what, religion. So I I have no idea, but yeah, like those are the I think true religions are the ones that have like the horseshoe sort of ain't like yeah uh, I think there's some symbol or some ingrained into them yeah, or whatever something. So, hey, Chad, I have some news that I feel like you'll you'll enjoy. I don't want to say you'll enjoy this because that's terrible. Okay, but Uh-oh. but I'm sure, but I just I I know no, I'm I intrigued. Know you. You know, I really want to know <laughs> though what what it is. Uh, University of Michigan students give an immediate stay at home order among. Uh, order amid a spike in COVID-19 cases. Not surprised. So uh, all University of Michigan undergrad students are now under an emergency stay-in-place order after data shows that COVID-19 cases among Michigan students represents more than 60% of all local cases. And by local cases, I imagine they mean Ann Arbor, the city of Ann Arbor. Right. Probably. Uh, I haven't been to Ann Arbor in a while, thankfully. So... (laughs) Yeah, don't breathe that Ann Arbor air. The order came from Washtenaw County Health, uh, blah, 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 on November 3rd. Uh, oh, and it was set to continue until November 3rd. Hmm. I mean, it does sort of seem inevitable, you know? Right. I well, feel like I, I knew when when they said they were going, they were allowing certain people back. I mean, it was just a matter of time, you know? Sure. Um, and it's going to continue that way um, f- for a while, I think, unless... Um, you know, yeah. I'd be interested to just drive through Ann Arbor on a Friday or Saturday just to see what's happening. Mm. Because I mean, obviously, in a I non- think it'd be pretty deserted. Believe you think it or so? Not. Okay, I, th- I think. 
but I could be wrong. I, I'm um, curious. I, I have no idea because actually, obviously, maybe, maybe that's not true. In a non-COVID time, it looks you know it's it's wild on, on right. the streets and in, in in the college areas on a Friday or Saturday night or something like that. So right. it'll be I, so it'll be interesting. I mean, I, not not even just Friday or Saturday, but it'd be interesting to see on like a peak day what it would look like now. I'd just be curious. I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. It's hard to say, though. I mean, Dexter has actually been busy a few weekends. So so maybe it also could be in Ann Arbor, too. Um, hard w- hard to say. I wonder how it's been going at uh, uh, our alma mater. I imagine better only because, obviously, it's a smaller congestion of people. Right. Less congestion. Right. Um, I, and I think I think they have a small enough campus where they could do testing they could do a lot of different Mm. stuff Mm -hmm. um i mean i have a buddy that i talked to that's a guitar teacher there um and and he said they're doing a pretty good job you know students are wearing masks in class i have a friend who uh is teaching in shanghai and she's doing the same thing when she teaches they all wear masks that would stress Uh me out to you to have to uh to i i feel like i'd be so concerned just all day that i'm gonna get (laughs) rona. right well, so just so you know, though, I, I did look on Albion's website, uh, and they actually have a uh, community dashboard with uh, statistics about testing. Um, so, so like, what's r- low risk? They had apparently three positives in isolation on campus. Where's one this positive. at? What school? Sorry. I, I... Uh, Albion College. If you just oh, okay. Google Albion College, uh, safe, safely community dashboard COVID, you should find it. Um and uh, yeah, so it says three positives in isolation on campus, one positive in isolation off campus, three individuals in precautionary isolation. Um, yeah, Not so bad. it looks like it looks like they have yeah they've been able to test I think a lot of the students and the staff. Um, the overall positive testing rate, Jared, in case you're cu- curious, Jared, is 027 um, percent. Population the s- uh, school, yeah, popu- uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, LBN yeah. or the school. Uh, I think of the in the school. Okay. Um, Currently in quarantine, 27. Currently in isolation, 10 on campus, 1 at home. 82 have completed quarantine. Currently in quarantine, awaiting contact tracing, 0. So it's I do like the fact that they do have all these updates. Um, yeah, this is very comprehensive. I'm, it is, I'm, I just found it, mm-hmm. and I'm looking at it, too. This is very con- comprehensive. I mean, that's how it should look everywhere, honestly. Yeah. They're doing a great job. Yeah. So it, shout it, out it, to Albion, dude. Give give them a couple of ham horns, man. They deserve I it. I think more than anything, I, I like the like no matter what's happening, I like the transparency, you know? Yep. Especially since it's uh, it seems like a that's actually less concerning than I thought it would be. Yeah, that looks pretty good, to be that honest. That seems and, pretty pretty unavoidable if you just go mm-hmm. to class and I don't know, dude. I, well, I, no, but I think they were having parties. Of I'm, course. I'm sure they did. But you They're also college trust, kids. You, I, well, that's ooh, see Okay, let me ask you this. What? If you were in college now, if mm-hmm. you were a, if you were, whenever it is that you can pledge, oh, it's second semester, isn't it? Yep. Freshman yep. year? Yep. Would you, would that change, make, uh, would, do you think that would change your decision on joining a fraternity? I think it would for me, probably. I don't know. I mean, maybe I joined not. sophomore year, but, so maybe if it was, know, if it was sophomore, if, say it was first semester sophomore year and, and you were joining then, like I did. Do you think that would... Uh, I think m- I still would have pledged freshman year. Okay. I don't think it would have changed. Yeah. I mean, what? it doesn't change that much. I mean, you're already on campus. I mean, if you're in a dorm, though, you can just also keep to yourself, you know? Yeah, but I kept... I mean, well, that's the, that's the thing, though, is when you come in as a sophomore... Do you think they're wearing the, masks in the frat house? Probably, probably not. But I would... <laughs> but see, once again, I would assume if these... If you, if you test everybody mm. on campus and you know you don't have it, and you and and That's this is true. all in theory, right? But in theory, if you don't leave the campus, if everyone's tested and there's no positives, I wonder I if mean, they just have like a constant stream of testing happening. Like they're just like they're always testing someone, you know. I right. wonder. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. That's a that's a good question. I'm not sure. But right here, oh well. See, that's what they also do is see they test the wastewater. It says that as well. We test wastewater out of residence halls. Uh, every so they two, like test the poo every for two to COVID? three days. Yeah, the there's, urine and, and feces. Yeah, there's yeah. COVID and feces. Interesting. Yes, sir. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, when this first when this first started, one of the guys I would watch on YouTube, uh, Dr. John Campbell, he he said that you need to be very careful using public restrooms because well, they can spread that way. Uh, oh man, yeah, I can imagine. I actually remember that reminds me of the Scrubs episode where they had the song where the answer's in the poo. Oh yeah, <laughs> that yep. whole song See? about whatever you need to find out about a person, you can check the poo and they'll have the answer. So I guess yeah. it's not surprising that you can find COVID See? in the poo. And uh, I know I know some places do that for uh, drug testing. Is they uh, test the wastewater to see what drug chemicals come up? Oh yeah, you can you can say pee. It's okay. Why wastewater? <laughs> well, well, wastewater is also the the dookie though, Jared. It's both of them. Oh, oh okay. The, oh, the waste that's water. water too. Luckily, I haven't had any water situations in the number two, so that that well, that's not. No, but that's no, just what has, they call it. They, I know. They call I know. It, yeah, they call I it know, that because it's, it's sewage. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Any anyway, should we? Uh, have you heard anything from? Yes, but have you heard anything from Michigan State regarding uh, COVID issues? Have you looked into it just out of curiosity? I I have not. Let's find out. Okay. Let's, uh, let's see. Uh, I mean. Uh, the, the only reason I find out about about Michigan is because it was trending on social media, so that was national right. news. So, I imagine a school in Michigan State side would also be national news if they're sending people home. Right. In East Lansing, on a game day like no other, strict COVID rules and security guards. Despite rising COVID, Michigan State to offer more classes and dorm housing. <laughs> that was from two days ago. That's a headline. Um, let's see here. Michigan State University, which leads the state's they colleges. They have a testing and, and reporting section, too. Oh, okay. Well, right here it says Michigan State University, which leads the state's colleges and universities in coronavirus cases. Well, here Announced I have Thursday. the uh, reporting. You got this all the info? pretty good. Oh, let's hear about it. Okay. So uh, the week of October 19th, there were 10 mm -hmm. cases. Okay. The week of October 12th, there were 23 cases. The week of October, the spike. So there was actually a spike. August thirty first, there was eighty one. September seventh, there was one hundred eleven. September fourteenth, mm -hmm. there were one hundred twenty seven. But then it dropped back down to forty seven. So they contain that pretty quickly. It seems like okay. Uh, weekly positives. There's wait five point five six percent. Uh, I believe that's uh, like of the population. By mm -hmm. results date, weekly beginning on week of. Yeah, they, these people are not great at explaining what the uh, <laughs> stats mean. So the height it was about twelve uh, percent, but last week was about five point five or about six percent of the population tested positive, five and a half percent. And uh, weekly tests uh, are pretty good. So during the spike, the weekly tests were six hundred seventy seven, seven forty seven, one thousand. But usually, it's around anywhere from uh, three hundred to five hundred per week. Okay. So, yeah. I Ooh, like the stats. Man. I'm not going to lie. I, I do mean, like the, sta the stats. The stats it, are they kind of make me feel better about going to college if I were to go to college now. Right. Well, it's at least good to have that transparency. And it's not know? as bad as I was expecting. Because if you think mm. about it, I mean, East, uh, East Lansing is like the population is bigger than Ferndale. <laughs> right. And so, like, that's, it, that, those numbers actually don't seem that bad. Right. That's true. That is very true. Well, uh, should right. we... Uh, well, shout out to the schools, actually. I'm kind of surprised. Yeah. Yep. Except it, it would, U of M, I guess. <laughs> it, would be, it would be better, though, if they definitely uh, did more online this and next semester, in my opinion. Um, but that's just yeah, my sure. two cents. Sure. Sure. All right. Well, Jared, can I uh, spread a little love? Yes. Spread a little love. So, Jared, I uh, had an interesting evening yesterday. Uh, I watched the new Borat movie. Uh, Borat subsequent. I'm going to watch film. it tonight. Okay, then I won't. So we can talk about it next episode. Okay, good. I won't spoil anything, but I do want to shout out to be uh, for Sasha Baron Cohen um, <coughs> for the movie for the uh, Borat number two movie uh, subsequent movie film. It's a very nice movie film. <laughs> I like it very much. Very nice. Uh, sorry, I just that Borat voice is hilarious, I but. Yeah, I'm definitely going to watch that tonight. Let me let me just let me just say this, Jared. Uh, mm -hmm. The reason why I think Sasha Baron Cohen uh, deserves a shout out is because his movies and his comedy expose certain sides of people that you would not believe unless you saw it. In some ways, um, and I'll leave it at that, and we can talk about that some more tomorrow. I know, I know Rudy Giuliani had some things to say. Oh man, <laughs> I, I'm not even going to say anything. We'll talk about it tomorrow. 
<laughs> we'll, we'll we'll definitely talk about it because it's yeah, uh, I, I, I haven't i don't even know really what it is i mean i saw what they said said on twitter right. but i obviously haven't seen it yet all right so yeah I, i'm excited i'm really excited for that and shout out to uh, sasha baron cohen for his yeah. uh his high art of comedy that he's doing it is really right. top notch i haven't even seen it yet but i've obviously seen the previous borat and not everything he's done but i've seen a good number of things he's done and right and he's he, hilarious he got, he got some some flack for this movie just like he did for the last one but there's actually a really good speech where he talks about that he creates these characters and does these movies to um, actually try to highlight like you know inequality bigotry all sorts of different, sure. different stuff so uh, and i feel like if you enjoy really, it, i think Jared. if you really understand the comedy you should get like it, it's it's you should get that you, you know right like it's product it, right. it's it's i'm not gonna say it's obvious but you can i feel like you can see what he's doing and if you can and a lot of people don't aren't really good at taking jokes too so it's right. like some of the stuff he like he he really does some i guess you would call it offensive humor Yep. And, if, and, oh, and yeah. people and people get turned off by it, and they and I think it it also kind of causes them to avoid the message, quote unquote. Let me know, let me let me just say this, Jared. I think there are plenty of scenes in the movie where I think a lot of uh, ladies uh, are are probably a little offended. Interesting. Um, All right, I really need yeah. to see this. Yeah. <laughs> so so l- let me know what you think. Uh, we can talk more about it on the next episode. All right. But Jared, I think you know what time it is. Yeah, dude. Time for some untranslatables. That's right. Uh, I, I actually so untranslatables are idioms, sayings, proverbs, uh, axioms that don't really make sense if you translate them directly uh, into English, but they do have a meaning to uh, whatever that native language is. I actually mm-hmm. want to start with one because, as you know, I've been watching Hey Arnold like a fiend. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've actually backed off a little bit. Uh, uh, I've been getting into Formula One a lot, even more recently, watching old races. Nice, nice, um, but. Uh, Helga, she is s- sort of the main uh, antagonist to H- Arnold, the protagonist, and she is uh, like it's she's madly in love with him, but she's also like a giant bully to other people and mm-hmm. him especially, especially Arnold. Poor. But Arnold. she she's she she plays herself as like sort of this tormented soul that just can't express herself uh, in public, and so she acts this way. But she's really like this tortured artist essentially and so she's always writing these poems and that she's reciting in secrecy to herself and uh one of them she said she has uh she's like oh why do i have such a thick tongue and i'm like a thick tongue that's an i I like that what do you think that's interesting a thick tongue is that's uh, her commentary on how she treats arnold yeah thick tongue would mean um like you treat you treat people harshly um, you know, you 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 don't use kind words or kind language. Mm. Um, you're you're rude. You're impolite. You get a little you're more rude. specific than that, though. Actually, it's uh, a, it is it is you how have, you is speak. It, you to have someone. a foul mouth. You have a dirty mouth. No Say it, bad words. No, when no. I was in, I feel like when I was in school, I uh, my teachers used to say this about me from time to time that you and have like, a thick tongue. Not that I would have a thick tongue. They wouldn't say that literally, but they would. The, but they could. And sometimes I, I feel like I would get in trouble more because um, of what I said rather than what I did because of my thick tongue. Can you repeat that one more time? I, I, I <laughs> sometimes in I I would get in trouble more because of what I said rather than what I did, and uh, teachers could say that I had a thick tongue because uh, of uh, what I would say. So it's like to to talk back kind of when you're talking back to someone how what what sort of tones do you a use condescending tone that's one of them yeah smart ass yeah sarcastic overly opinion. yeah there you go very good that's what i was looking for why are you order <laughs> you know and they are in new york and they they do kind of have a slight new york accent so right. that's actually kind of kind of fitting <laughs> why are you order <laughs> uh, uh, yeah funny. i could imagine harold saying that yeah, that's true. All right. Well, my first one for you, actually, all of mine today are Greek. And this is Mo Ahais Kane Tizopatini, which means uh, you've made my life a roller skate. Like you've made my life a living hell? Um, I imagine someone stepping on an unexpected roller skate in a parking lot 
<laughs> and running into like a fence or the side of a car. <laughs> y- yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll give it to you. Yeah. Basically, it's when someone turns your life upside down or made your life in a, a good way hell. or a bad. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm yep. going to say I got that right then. Mm hmm. Yep. You've made my life a roller skate, Jared. Uh, <laughs> my next one is uh argentinian spanish mm-hmm. uh and it's uh ni en pedo pedo ni en pedo which means not even in fart so it's like it's impossible uh yes i'm gonna give that to you but mm-hmm. i'm gonna say first i'm gonna uh there's a more specific meaning to that. Let me let me put it this way. So yes, that's what it means. But the um, if you were to say estar en pedo, you know, estar meaning you know whoever you're pointing it at, someone mm-hmm. is en pedo. You would be saying that that person is uh, drunk. That means someone's drunk in Argentina. Oh, uh, okay. Argentina. A little saucy. Getting and lost so, in the um, sauce. if you say ni en pedo, it means it means I, like I would never, but it means not even if I were drunk. Is is what it Ooh, what you're saying? Okay, but it means. You, what, what, but yes, you still did get it right. Okay, interesting. My next one is also Greek. Um, Piesto avgo kai kurefto, and it means grab an egg and shave it. It means get out of here. Get out. Grab an egg and it's, shave yeah, it. Why? It, uh, why don't? Yeah. It's there, there's there, there's there's a lot better of English sayings for like get out of here than i can think of mm. right now but there are ones like that where it's like pick up your horse carriage and kick it i just made yeah that up, yeah that's not what this means though unfortunately Jared. oh it's not oh. no not at all not at all i just gave myself a ham horn you did you you were a little quick nothing. on the draw there jared a little quick on the draw uh, okay so could you give me the uh what the literal again grab <laughs> an egg over. and shave it grab an grab an is it like doing the impossible or something do something very really difficult g- very good oh, wow. hit that ham horn very good. Okay, I redeemed myself. You did. <laughs> you you were allowed to be quick on the draw. <laughs> you know, but we're, we are uh, we are certified professionals. We here, really Jared, are professionals. Sure. That was good. That was good. Yep. Can I give you another egg one real quick? In sure. Greek? See sure. If, see if you can go three for three today, because I think right. this will make you three for three. No pressure, Jared. Here we go. Eho hasai ta avga kai ta pashalia. Which means I've lost my eggs and baskets, Jared. I've lost my eggs and baskets. Oh, it's like I've lost my marbles. You go, you go, going crazy, or you're like losing your mind. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. We can. I'll allow it for three for three. <laughs> yeah, when you when you have no idea what's going on, completely lost, puzzled, and confused. Okay, okay. To, to I was lose a little off. I see where you. I see where you're. Right. Where you. I, yeah. was, I was being generous. You know, the judges gave lost me the thumbs up. Lost your marbles up and, is more like you're crazy. Right. But, you know, if you are completely lost, puzzled, and confused, you might go crazy. So That's true. That's you know. true. And I'm, I'm, yeah, that's a good point. Trying to I help guess. a brother out there, you know. <laughs> this is kind of sad, but I guess that's true. Right. Speaking of sad, no. No, 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 no. no. I take that back. I take <laughs> well, that back. Speaking of sad, here, let's, let's talk about voting, Jared. And I want to start off with something that is a little sad, but it's kind of crazy. Mm. Um, because this year technically would also apply to this. Have you heard of... The Curse of Tippecanoe or Tecumseh's Curse. No. This I is don't called know what or that also is. called the Presidential Curse, the Zero Year Curse, or the Twenty Year Curse. And this is uh, pretty crazy, Jared. So the uh, Tecumseh curse is that uh, uh, presidents who are elected in a year that ends in zero die during their term. Mm. And let me give you, you some. some st- oh. I have some stats here for you. Here are the following presidents. I might that need were to part re-vote. of this curse. I might need to reconsider uh, my vote. Right. right. <laughs> so here we go. So uh, one of the first ones was William Henry Garrison, who okay. was elected in 1840. Old Billy Garrison. And uh, poor Billy died of pneumonia. Mm. Then we have Honest, which Abe. is interesting. Pneumonia uh-huh. can't. It seems like it can be something that presents itself with COVID too. Right. Hmm. Maybe every. Yeah. A- anyway, these are this is a, a very eerie already. <laughs> right. But I thought this would be kind of interesting to talk about. So, did it say uh, how long he was in office? Uh, well, he died eighteen forty one. So I would assume one year. He oh right. Elected Sorry. Eighteen forty. Right, 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 right. uh, okay. Abe, Honest Abe. Abe Lincoln uh, was elected in eighteen sixty and uh, died in eighteen sixty five. I believe. Um, 
Uh, okay, James A. Garfield, um, 1880, died in 1881. He was assassinated. William McKinley, uh, in his second term, he died in 1901, was elected in 1900, uh, also assassinated. William 1900 J- seems like an eerie year. That's almost get- kind of like being elected in 2000 or something. Right, you know? or 2020. Um, any, anyways, <laughs> spooky. Uh, anyways, William J. Harding, um, or G. Harding, sorry, William G. Harding uh, died in 1923, was elected in 1920. He also died of pneumonia. Uh, hmm. Then we have Franklin D. Roosevelt, who died in his fourth term, uh, 1945, via a brain hemorrhage and was elected 1940. And then the last one, uh, JFK, John F. Kennedy, uh, elected 1960, died in 63. Um there's one other president actually who was in office. He was elected in 1848 and died in 1850. Um, so are you uh, are you uh-huh. superstitious? Are you superstitious? I'm not super. I'm not superstitious, but you could call me a little stitious, Jerry. Mm. <laughs> so and that's an office line. No, I'm not. I'm not. But this is interesting. And just just in case you're curious, Jared, this curse hasn't ended. We've just had two presidents that Dude. have been survivors. Ronald Reagan, there was an assassination attempt on him in uh, nine, in the 80s. He was elected in 1980. And George W. Bush, there was also an assassination attempt, and he was elected, I believe, in 2000. Okay, so this crazy is freaking stuff. me out, dude, because crazy. Um, it's also, we're about to elect in one of the oldest presidents we've ever yep. elected in. This is kind yep. of terrifying. <laughs> yep. I mean, the odds are definitely not in their favor, um, but I at least a- we have good modern medicine. I have a quiz question for you. What episode was our superstitions episode? For superstitions and why we believe them. For oh, uh, this I podcast have no idea. is an ep- superstitions right. episode. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Episode I have no, forty-seven. I, oh, interesting. Okay, yeah. Go back and listen to that on December eighth, twenty eighteen. Fun fact: the good, that was almost two years ago, bro. But yeah, dude, that's wild. That's crazy. I, I mean, it, so see, see it's curse, weird to bro. say this, mm-hmm. but it doesn't. But it, but. But this trend is, is is like this is if any year like this seems like a very possible year for this trend to continue. I mean, yeah, yeah. There's well, a one, pandemic. One, we have one the of oldest our presidents, presidents had COVID. You know, yeah, I mean, but he feels better than he has in 20 years. So. Of course, well, because he's, he's pumped up on now. steroids and and Big Macs and <laughs> he's like Captain America, Diet Coke. <laughs> That's right. If Captain America had a fat suit on, you know, and, and a spray tan and a different hairdo that you know, he, he drops 70 posture. grand per year. Um, <laughs> yeah. Why is he leaned over like that? He, Yeah. I don't know. Oh, man. Oh, man. Well, let's talk about the election and voting and everything, Jared, because uh, I do think it's an, it's an interesting topic. And I think a lot of, uh, of our listeners abroad uh, might enjoy kind of hearing about some of this stuff, you know. Um, what I think is fascinating, though, is I think the the election that obviously gets the most attention is the presidential election, which is interesting because uh, at least what they told us in school was uh, that the local elections were actually the ones that were more influential on really on your daily lives. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, those people tend to make decisions that will affect well, you in a more close manner. Yes, and I mean, according to the song of the pod, hint, hint. It also mm. sort. It also builds. Like you have to have the the vote, the local voters. The de- like it all builds upwards from from locally, you know. And so, if right. you don't have the foundation of your community, be like if if your community reflecting what you want, then you won't be able to get to, you know to you know yeah, for sure. Right. And right. uh, but but it's not it's not fun. Voting for president is more, quote unquote, I would say, fun and popular because America. it's the guy that everyone knows and everyone sees, right. and he's the famous one. And right. people, more people know the president than they know their own local, right? Uh, you know, officials probably. So, so first, Jared, let's get started by discussing who can and who cannot vote. I think that's an important thing to know. Uh, so, number one, Jared, if you uh, if you're a U.S. citizen, you can vote. That's like step number one. Uh, step number two, uh, you need to meet your state's residency requirements. Um, apparently, Jared, in case you're curious, you can be homeless and still meet these requirements. 
You need to be 18 years old on or before election day. Mm -hmm. So Jared just made the cuff. He turned 18 a couple weeks ago. Uh, so thankfully he can vote. Um, Jared was one of those genius prodigies in school. He was, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, 14 or 15 when he graduated Wearing from Albion. Wearing a suit and with a briefcase going to work at 14. That's right. Hey, That's Myers, right. I need those briefs on my desk by uh, by an EOD. EOD. <laughs> That's right. Making making those big dollars Or right COB. There. That's what they say. Close a business. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, and then uh, in almost every state, you can register to vote before you turn 18 if you will be 18 by election day. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, you need to register to vote in your state. Interesting fact, though, Jared, if you're too lazy to register, um, just move to North Dakota because they do not require any voter registration. So That's how it should be everywhere. I agree. I agree. And I think that's something we should also talk about today, Jared, is, uh, is some of the issues with voting. Um, yeah. which, which also, I guess, let's just quickly discuss who can't vote. So if you are a non-U.S. citizen, including a permanent legal resident, unfortunately, you cannot vote in the U.S. Uh, some people with felony convictions cannot vote. The rules vary depending on the state. So uh, for all of those people, the best bet is to check with your state elections office about the laws. Yeah, um, I think sometimes there's, there's like a time limit on how long you've been out and free. Right. Uh, because uh, I know Snoop Dogg voted for the first time or something like that, right? And he's an ex-convict. If you've listened, he's been uh, very vocal about about all that stuff. Well, that's actually interesting because he's been very uh, anti-Trump, and then Ice Cube and Fifty Cent, uh, <laughs> yeah, have been very different. Ice, I mean, Ice Cube has a. I mean, excuse me, Fifty Cent has a long history of showing his ass and just being a like. Ice Cube is literally a troll. Like like he mm -hmm. he's a social he's a social media troll and a real life troll. I mean we've talked about what he did to Ja Rule at one of right. Ja Rule's concerts. He bought out like the first however many uh, rows of the uh, of the concert, so they were just empty. Yeah, like the first thirty <laughs> rows. Yeah, yeah just, empty. just that is hilarious. <laughs> Can you imagine um, that you get out there and that's just dead empty? But Ice Cube is really embarrassing himself right now. Like, first what, of all, he's, what he's you really do? showing I really his been ass. Following it. There's, okay. there's been a lot of uh, I've heard a lot of talk of I used I followed him on social media, but I can't really mm. keep up with what he's saying sometimes. But there's okay. been a lot of like uh, talk of that he's been talking about a lot of anti-Semitic stuff. But uh -oh. even more recently, the reason that he's been more aligned with Trump recently that people are talking about is that he he, he quote unquote worked with the. Trump community, uh, the Trump uh, camp or the Trump organization to get mm -hmm. a, a plan for black people to get money into uh, black communities. But mm -hmm. uh, did you did you see or hear about the clip of him? Uh, maybe I can even find it. The clip of him going on Roland Martin and explaining that uh, explaining the plan to Roland Martin. Mm -mm. Bro, it, it's hard. It, it, it's it's hard. It's hard to watch. I, I can I can probably I can probably find it pretty quickly. But anyway, he's ex he's explaining this plan, and you can visually see him first of all look at the uh, like look at his computer screen and read off of it, and he's just reading off of it. And after like ha and he just stops talking, he's he, he like he just doesn't know what he's talking about. And he's like, but and he's like, but what is the other one doing? Is the other one putting money into our community? Meaning like uh, Biden or the Democrats. Uh, hold on, I think I'm about to play. Attention, home. Uh, of course, there's an ad. There's always got to be an ad. I thought you had ad block around. I'm here. using my oh, phone, bad boy. Oh, I see. So, uh, what Listen to this. Did they? Add, what's in their plan here, that, right, that they actually you. took from Can yours? You see that? Yep, I've yeah, gone yeah. through their yep. plan line, line by line. I mean, perfectly honest with you, I, I don't see it, what even what's in the plan they released. It even mirrors there's what's in yours. Yeah, it's just. I, well, I like listen. I said, you know, both plans between both parties are lacking. Um, He's right so, about that. You know, this is what they did. Um, you know, you have to look at the contract with Black and. But I, th I, yeah, sure. But I think it's fair to say that the Democratic Party does have a more like a more comprehensive plan for Black America. And and if you go to Biden's site, there's a specific area about what he plans to do for Black America. So I so. I would say that is a little disingenuous. See where the overlap actually. is, um, but you know the thing that that uh, what I try to make them understand is, you know, they have programs and both parties have programs that are built for minorities and people of color and diversity and urban and these words that don't include us. 
because we All right. they include us, but we oh. only get a small portion. Right. Most of the um, thing with all. Well, you know, Jared, if you what do listened, you see in the platinum plan they released? This is one that this is actually perfect. Oh, okay. any, that that mirrors anything that's in yours. Now he's going to his computer. You can see him pulling uh, it up. You know, you got. You know, if I'm looking at it. If I'm looking at it. <laughs> um, a green and direct VC money. Um, to black investment, um, companies up to forty billion dollars. Um, he has stopped. Um, he just stopped. He literally just just stopped. He's just standing there. I mean, he's see, not. A lot he's of not people frozen. Have been talking about this five hundred right. billion. That's not going to black people. All I'm saying is, uh, it just mm-hmm. did not look good on Ice Cube. He, he doesn't seem like he knows what he's talking about. You know, right. And it just well, it, did, he just right. clearly did not look good in that. And Roland Martin is someone that would you would think would you know g- gave him the opportunity to 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 speak, and it's just like right. you kind of blew it. You look like an idiot. I right. think. Yeah, I think well, that was you know, embarrassing. You, I felt you know, I felt though, embarrassed Jared, watching that. According according to Trump, if you uh, did watch the uh, debates, he did say he has done just as much, if not maybe more, for black people than <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. So. Uh, <laughs> Oh man, dude! When I when I saw that on social media, uh, I thought my eyes were gonna roll out of my skull. I mean, just the, the you know. And the funny thing is, that's probably not even like one of the craziest things he said. Like that's oh, just no. like it's like yeah, of course he said we would say something like that. And that, that was probably one of the few <laughs> grammatically correct sentences he said in in a while, um, for sure. But so, yeah, uh, voting. It's mm-hmm. so uh, and you know so we were talking about how the presidential election is the big daddy popular one that everyone cares right. about and gets all the uh, all the shine and That's yet right. still the percentage of people that vote in this country is pretty sad. <laughs> it's uh, mm-hmm. in tw- in the twenty sixteen election the turnout was fifty five percent of mm. the uh, of the eligible voting population uh, voted, okay. and uh, I think that's pretty sad. And I'm not gonna lie. That's, that's I would pretty, agree with you. Pretty sad. You said though you don't think voting should be mandatory. I don't think it should be mandatory, but I think it should be a national holiday. Fun fact: uh, at my work, we get uh, we get voting day off. I do even too. though I've already. I'm knowing me though. I'm probably still going to do some work, but uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna I'm try not. to. Relax a little <laughs> bit a, more that day. That's a holiday. But, I earned that. It was right. ex- exhausting. But yeah, but it should be a holiday for everybody. I think. Um, I don't think it should be mandatory, um, but I think um, it it definitely is. It should be, should be more accessible. Access oh, to for vote, sure. Yeah, for voting sure. should be way more accessible. Yes. I, I I agree. I agree with you there. Like now now maybe maybe before they take the step you know the step to mandatory try just making it more accessible like they do in right. South Dakota just bring right. your license or something North and Dakota, show that but yeah was it North Dakota I, yeah. I thought I could have sworn he said South no, Dakota yeah okay. North North Dakota yeah yeah but I so agree the it's fifty five percent in twenty sixteen for the presidential election right. which is still the one where the turnout is the highest so any election mm-hmm. that's not the presidential election. Imagine it probably more in the 40s area. Right. Or, or lower. Well, the tricky Obviously, it depends thing is, though, on where you're too, at. Well, the tricky thing is, though, too, is um, I don't think we get a lot of transparency about, like, you can you can go on Google and you can find this stuff yourself, you know, but I wish, I wish there was a way that we could, um, like, maybe this is a stupid idea, but even just, like, getting a little brochure or something in the mail or even... You know, something that would explain like what some of the local candidates, um, you know, where they stand on certain views and stuff. Because like, if you Google it, you can find it. It takes time, though, because right. there were a lot of people I didn't know about. But it, but I did um, a lot of the people. If you I, if I Googled them, I could find something about them that gave me at least a clue on to what direction they leaned, you know, whether right. it be more left or right. But uh, it was still. I'm not gonna lie. It was still. It still took like a lot of time. Some of these people that are that are like some of these smaller courts, where they also is sort of this, in a weird way, sort of this air of um, this sort of pretending that they're uh, that they're impartial. When really, if you really look deep down, you can find 
uh, like you could find which way they they sort of lean, but it does mm-hmm. take some searching. Did you do like all the all the googling and stuff uh, I did, of the people? I did. I hate to say it, but I did some of the googling. I uh, well, here's what I did. Mm-hmm. I for so for for every section, it says how many people you can vote for. Uh, you know, a lot of them are vote for no more than one, vote for no right. more than two for some of the judges. Sometimes it's vote for no more than six for some of these judges. If if, if for any of them were where uh, the same amount of like where it says vote for no more than six and there are six options, mm-hmm. I you did vote not for vote all for them. them. I did not vote for any of them. Oh, why is that? Um, well, because it was hard. Because for those people, also, it's like maybe sometimes I would I, would, I voted for one of them, maybe, but it was just so hard to like find any information on them. And I'm like, well, at this rate, is are they all going to get voted in? Uh. Or like, does it make any difference either way? Because they're all gonna get it. Or can you just put six bubbles next to one person and they get all six of your votes? No, I'm just kidding. That's not how it uh, works. Is that what you did? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jared. I, I will tell you though. I got. Uh, I did my vote by mail uh, for this election, and I did get uh, horrendous uh, flashbacks from doing uh, scantrons in high school. Just circling in bubbles. Yeah, yeah. So many I've never bubbles stayed dude. inside Crazy. the line so beautifully. Except in school, you're supposed to use the number two pencil, and now you have to use black or blue ink. Yep. I uh, yeah. I I got very paranoid that I was gonna mess up the ballot. Did you actually mail yours in? No, we. Uh, I dropped mine off at the same the local clerk office because I think same. that's the. The safe thing to do. The the crazy thing though is, you know, we do have a lot of issues with voter suppression mm-hmm. in the uh, in the states, uh, and the thing is, is that uh, I guess some places they have been putting um, illegitimate voting I saw boxes, that. which People, is so crazy. In like local Republican chapters, with the, with I think there were some cities in California or something that did that. I saw that, and they admitted to it, so, so they right. definitely. And it's like, yeah, and, and they just put up fake ballot so boxes. So messed up. And that's it's just so like, messed up. yeah, that I, that is that is so that I think that's messed. I mean, obviously it's messed up, but it's just like it, the, the lack of of sort of morals that these people, especially that these conservatives have, is so like it, it's it's just so contradictory, you know? Right. Oh man, that's yeah, it's crazy. I do want to give you though, uh, Jared. 10- also, how do these people? Let me just ask you this: mm-hmm. Which I feel like I would not be able to sleep at night if I were to do something like that. <laughs> I don't know how people sleep at night doing something like that. Well, I Jared, feel like that would haunt the shit out of me. Well, Jared, regardless of uh, of what our listeners think of our uh, sometimes uh, ridiculous jokes and humor. I do think you are a good person at your core, <laughs> and uh, and that's I why I not do that. You know, I I also couldn't do that. I think we both have too much of a conscience. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I don't know. The crazy thing is just like rigged elections, and and you would think we would have a better system for everything. But Jared, I want to give you but some. That, but, ten- th- but there's a reason why we don't have a better system. That's all the point of the, right. the voter suppression. Right. Is this in a true. lot of people's interest to not to, to, to not simplify it? Because right. when it, it like it just uh, off of the way the numbers work for whatever reason, uh, well, Republicans vote more than Democrats. They're more consistent voters. Right. And so the more people you well, get it's also to vote, more older people and they have more sure. free time to lollygag down to the old voting booth. And so the more people you get to vote, statistically speaking, you're more likely to get more uh democrats to vote just like the more you you get like the higher the voter turnout is the better it is for democrats usually but mm-hmm. you know with lower Dem- voter turnout usually it's going to favor uh republicans so that's why like it's 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 in a a large portion of the society's interest not to simplify it right yeah anyway what were you about to say I would like to share 10 fun facts on voting history. I'm sure these are real fun. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, Jared, we're going to start with number one. Okay. Uh, George Washington, President Numero Uno, actually bought drinks on Election Day. In 1758, George Washington, uh, then a young candidate for Virginia House of Burgesses, the first legislative assembly of elected representatives in North America, bought a huge round of drinks on Election Day. That's probably how he got elected, Jared. Got everyone shammered, and then they all went down and voted for him. <laughs> that guy's great. Spent he his entire some... <laughs> campaign budget, fifty pounds, on one hundred and sixty gallons of liquor served to three hundred and ninety 
won voters. The custom of buying votes with booze was one of the English traditions imported to the American colony. <laughs> of course, that Why was an English tradition. Why don't they do that nowadays, dude? If they had booze <laughs> at election polls, people would come by the hundreds, if not thousands. I don't thousands. know if I would trust that booze. Uh, I mean, I guess it could be like closed. They just give you a beer on your way out. Well, right. Well, it's also, like the sticker. With our, because Except our stupid they give you laws, a beer and serve a sticker. Because our stupid laws, in the vast majority of locations in the United States, you wouldn't be able to like just walk out and drink that beer because you can't right. drink beer in public in most U.S. cities. That's why you got to make it Orleans legal in Vegas the polling area. <laughs> that's why the polling yeah. area, Jared. That's your special, special. That's true. You like cheers with safe, your fellow safety voters. Safety spot. Right. Put your sticker on and cheers. Exactly. Yay. George Washington. I would, take a, I would take a beer over a sticker, though. Just saying. Um, what what if you could see like how they tip the scale on like what kind of liquor they gave on, on like whether right. it would be quality or whether they lean towards like I don't know a wine versus they a beer or versus a liquor to get, they would try to use seltzers to get, the to get all the uh, all the millennials like to go fireball yeah. <laughs> right get all the rednecks shots of fireball right <laughs> you could have so many stereotypical drinks fireball you could have henny you could have um uh, all Jager sorts bombs. of good ones yep <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh man! Well, Jared, that would actually, yeah. I mean, I could understand why they why they would stop doing that. Right. But that was back in the day before, like when alcohol was like that was like a, that was like Sprite back back you drank in seventeen seventy six. You drank it more than water back then because it was probably safer. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was cleaner. Like, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that was drinking a beer was more normal than drinking a diarrhea. glass of water. Exactly. Ugh, you're drinking water? <laughs> what do you exactly. want to die? <laughs> Drink this beer or wine, you right. fool. Or the scotch or whiskey, <laughs> but yeah, or bourbon. But yeah, fun fact number two for you, Jared. Uh, one mm -hmm. of the reasons why we vote when we vote is because weather and the harvest dictated election timing. In the 1800s, the agrarian economy involved most mm -hmm. Americans. In 1840, farming was the, uh, the occupation of 69% of working Americans. Uh, farmers weren't able to travel easily until the harvest was over. Also, the onset of winter conditions in areas that had uh, bad winter conditions made travel a problem, so elections happened in the late fall. Number three, this is a funny one, Jared. Um, the Ohio the Constitution... Way, yeah? When, when that last one, slavery was still happening, by the way, during that, just so people know. <laughs> oh, yep. Yep. Slavery is still happening during these things. Yep. I feel like that really puts... A, I don't know. I just feel like it's such a weird context sometimes where it's like farming was such a big a uh, aspect and all I thought where it's like, yeah, but slavery was still happening. So it's like... I, it's it's like it's not like you were i mean I, yeah i'm sure there are still people farming that weren't slaves like white people mm -hmm. farming that weren't slaves but I, I feel like a vast majority were, were slaves i don't know and they weren't allowed to vote anyway anyway sorry right. go ahead sorry uh, I didn't mean to fun, fun fact number three ohio constitution has a no idiots clause the ohio constitution <laughs> prohibits quote unquote idiots from voting article five section six of ohio's constitution states no idiot or insane person shall be entitled to the privileges of an elector, which is ironic because half of Ohio are idiots. Um, so I'm not. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. Um, but it, shots um, fired. But, yeah. but uh, the funny thing is, well, not the funny thing is idiots back then. It's not funny, I guess. It, it, that meant like someone that like, had like some sort of debilitating mental like mental disability like disability that's what idiot right. meant it is just so funny that, that right in the 1850s, this idea of calling some right. like calling them an idiot is right. still funny to me it's, it's just like this uh, like there were a lot of uh, there was another one but it's just like stuff that is just like sort of a throwaway insult today even like dumb that meant you couldn't right. talk right <laughs> right yeah uh number uh my next one for you jared in texas believe it or not you can vote with a gun license uh but you cannot vote Excuse me, with a student ID. <laughs> yeah, that's not surprising. Well, I mean, I, I'd hope that getting a gun license is harder than getting a student ID. Right. Exactly. Um, all right. Which this test is, do you think is harder? The interest? I mean, I mean, I know what it is, but <laughs> it's definitely easier to get a gun than it is to go to college, and especially right. in Texas. I would say so. Yeah, Texas actually has some pretty good universities. Oh, um, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, okay, another one. This is kind of an interesting one. Uh, the president was actually chosen days prior to the inauguration in 1877. Um, I like that. Yeah. But, so, but, mm -hmm. but I think now there's a lot more space for people contesting it. Like, like he, cause that, that leaves, that doesn't leave any space for like any sort of issues in the voting, you know? 
Because like then what? Then we're gonna drag the drag the voting like they drag the same president on or like how does that switch work? I feel like you need some time in between just to make sure that it's been let that is right. Right. Here here's an interesting one. I didn't know about this one. Uh, New Jersey allowed women to vote the longest. Uh, the New Jersey Constitution of 1776 did not discriminate by gender when it came to voting. Uh, and here's a quote from their constitution, Jared. All inhabitants of this colony of full age who are worth 50 pounds proclamation money, wherever that means. Uh, well, that means you have to. So that have, means that part of voting was that they put a like you had to have some sort of wealth to you. I mean, 50 pounds. Right. I don't know how much that is, but right. I'm sure it's a good amount of money. Right. Clear a state in the same and have resided within the county in which they claim a vote for 12 months immediately preceding the election shall mm-hmm. be entitled to vote for representatives in council and assembly and also for all other public officers that shall be elected by the people of the county at large. How liberal um, of them. Right. The gender neutral <laughs> language was not an oversight uh, in 1797. All New Jersey counties used he or she to refer to voters. Mm. Uh, However, in 1807, New Jersey women lost the right to vote in New Jersey when voting was restricted to, here we go, free white male citizens. This made New Jersey the last state in the country to take voting rights away from women. Yeah, this is a bad idea. Let's take this. Right. (laughs) Um, pretty crazy stuff. They're not uh, voting the way we want them to. So let's r- just go back to right. um, <laughs> doing this ourselves. Of, speaking of women and voting, Jared, in Utah, women got the right to vote uh, in Utah twice. So the right of women to vote uh, was won twice in Utah. It was granted unanimously first in 1870 by the territorial legislature, uh, but revoked by Congress in 1887 as a part of a national effort to stop polygamy in in the territory. <laughs> that doesn't uh, make any sense. Mormon Emily, I know, right? Uh, Sophia Tanner Richards and her husband were leaders of the state's woman suffrage movement. So did you have and, to be married to get to to, to vote? Uh, to vote? I, I'm not sure. It doesn't say this article, I feel like you probably... I would, I would assume so, yeah. You have to be connected um, to some sort of man right. to vote. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, okay, uh, but then let's see here. Uh, so Sophia and her husband were leaders of the state's women's suffrage movement. In 1895, the right to vote and hold office was written into the Constitution of the new state. Um, mm. so, so that's kind of fascinating. Um, but yeah, I, dude, voting is, is definitely an interesting thing in this country. That's for sure. Have we been getting uh, text and calls and shit? Oh, all the time. Dude, I get an time. unending amount of text messages, 90% of them from Pennsylvania. I'm like, I don't even live here anymore. I, pff, it, dude, right. as I open my messages, I have a new message. Hi, Jared. This voted? is Maurice with PA Workers Family Party. The election is on Tuesday. Uh, I did not even plan that. <laughs> right. You should, you should hit up your boy uh, Maurice and tell him, look, man. I already <laughs> voted for Trump. I'm good. Thank you. Do you do you respond to any of those? I haven't responded to one. Oh yeah, I troll them all. I say I say. Do you oh, really? No. Okay. No, not at all. No. Okay. Maybe I should, but I don't. <laughs> I, I don't think feel about like it's it. not going to make a difference. I get, Probably. I not. actually got a new. Uh, I, I've never seen this before. So you know when you get calls, sometimes they'll say like scam risk. Right. Oh yeah. The other day on Thursday, I got from Pennsylvania once again. I was like, I don't even Uh-oh. live here. <laughs> right. I got uh, a political call risk. Is what it Uh-oh. says. Political call. And I was like, I've never seen that one before. It's actually so bad, bro. That mm-hmm. uh, I hung up on my dentist the other day. So I was listening to really? a podcast that I was really enjoying, and okay. I, got, I saw a phone the untranslatable n- podcast, of course. I saw a phone call that I uh, I saw a phone call, and I didn't recognize the number. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, but it was like a local number, and so I right. so I literally just answered it, then hung up. I did that number because if you do the if you just hit the the like the button on the side, it mutes the ringing, but it still goes through the process of ringing. And right. I was like, it's just a it's just a scam. I'll just close it. And then I got a call right back, like I got from the same number right back. And I was like, oh wait, Uh-oh. maybe I do kind of recognize that number. And it was my dentist. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Gotta keep those teeth clean, Jerry. And they're like, you were calling about rescheduling your appointment. I was like, oh yeah, no, I did call you about that. That. sorry for hanging up on you. i didn't say that but i was like oh yeah i'm just so i just can't trust any call now but maybe right. i should just save their phone number into my uh mm. into my phone that's a lesson save your dentist phone number into your phone that's that's fair that's fair i just google it every time um right <laughs> anyway um 
Well, uh, oh yeah. So do the polls? Do you when, when do you believe in the polls? Do the polls mean anything? Have you ever answered a poll? No. I've never answered a poll either. Maybe that's one of the political calls I just got. Actually, now that I think about it, maybe that's what it was. Could Who be. knows? Could but be. I have never partaken, partook, partwak in a poll, and um, I don't know who does. And I don't. I, I feel like they always say this. Now they always say this, especially after last election, where everyone just assumed Hillary Clinton was going to win. Um, right. But that it's was just a like bad idea. I, whoever listens to polls, who? When, why does it matter? I don't know. I, I don't know. Although I will say this, maybe I'd be a little bit more inclined to listen to polls this year because did you know that voter turnout this year has been happening in record numbers? So I did as, hear about that. Yeah. As of um, well, twelve days before the election, whatever that was, a couple of days ago. Well, now mm-hmm. like a week ago when this comes out. Right. Um, uh, we surpassed uh, in 2020 early votes for the 2020 election 47 million have exceeded the entirety of early votes in the 2016 election and that was with 12 days oh I see that was October 22nd sorry I couldn't see uh, and that was with 12 days remaining uh, before the election I mean it kind of right. makes sense because of the pandemic but once again when you see higher voting numbers in general it tends to uh, favor the la- the democrats and it actually shows because i believe there are stats showing that so far more democrats have voted than republicans mm. but also Uh-oh, watch out I-, I think there's also something to say once again why i don't really i mean that's not a poll that's just a, a fact i guess but like uh the thing is it's like yeah but also more Dem- uh, republicans probably are less likely to have these insanely long lines because voter mm. suppression is probably less of a problem there and they're probably True. less concerned about um they're probably less concerned about COVID, you know. Like I feel right. like the the Democrats in general, uh, that like that side is probably more taking the precaution to just vote that way because of COVID also, and they're more speaking, concerned about speaking that. Speaking of voting sites and everything, Jared, have you heard about? Uh, you know, this is of course America, and uh, we love our guns in here in America. <laughs> have you heard about people uh, carrying guns into polling places? And what are your thoughts on that? <clears throat> uh, I have not heard about that. I thought is is that not illegal? Well, it depends on the state, Jared. I guess depends so. Depends on the state. I saw a cop wearing a um, Trump mask to a uh, to a polling location to vote, and I think he got in trouble for that. Uh-oh. I think I think that's that's that could that could be seen as intimidating a little bit. I think. I mean, I feel like you kind of know that as a police officer, like you have that a- added attention to you and what that could mean. Like you know what that could mean, whether right. you're what you whether sure. you're. And I think it, w- it did have one of those like I don't remember exactly what the phrase was, so mm-hmm. um, but it, it but the phrase below was some sort of like it wasn't just keep America great it was like you know liberal tears or something you know it was it wasn't that specifically but it was something along those lines you know like you know like watch liberals cry again or something like you know some like that it wasn't just your it, I don't know so like I, I I feel like a person like that has to know what they're doing and if they're not it really highlights how uh, how much of an idiot I'll say they are <laughs> right yeah I I would agree. If you, you know, don't know it, if you act, if you're going to act stupid and be like, "What? I, I just, you know, I'm. Can, am I not allowed to vote a political, you know, a pre, uh, or is my, am I allowed to s- support a political party just because I'm a police officer? It's like, yeah, but you, like you know, you have you not looked at the news? Read the room. <laughs> Read the room. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, Jared, I think uh, for some of those people, they might need a, a little education on how the <laughs> yes, uh, how I the agree. voting system works. And you know, one way you can educate yourself, believe it or not, is through music, Jared, which I think leads us to our song of the pod today, mm-hmm. which is titled "My Vote Will you Count" betcha. by Yellow Pain, featuring uh, I think that's Seven Seven Streeter. Um, and this is this is quite the tune, Jared. Um, I had never heard of Yellow Pain before, but I I just looked up vote and song. To, mm-hmm. on youtube to see what what would pop up and uh, this one came up uh has quite uh, quite a few views and is quite the banger uh but what are your thoughts on it jared it is a banger um it, it is a good message it is spreading a good message to vote mm-hmm. but as far as hip-hop goes i mean he is a good rapper and i do like the the woman's voice don't get me wrong right but as far as hip-hop goes this is about as corny as it gets this mm. <laughs> i mean That's do you not fair. agree with me 
Do you not I mean, find a little, a little do bit? Do you not see the corniness in educational hip hop? Just the idea, like I don't know. It's so like it's almost, it, uh, and maybe it's because it's also I don't know. It's just so corny. It, it's a good message. The, mm-hmm. the, it's a good the it's wrapped well. It's not badly wrapped. But good message rap to me is always going to be corny. I'm sorry. As, mm. as someone that's listened to a lot of hip hop in my day, d- just that mm. spreading, a, just so blatantly spreading that like a uh, message is always kind of corny to me. But I will say, if you're going to make a corny rap, make it good. And this is this a good is corny good. rap. Yeah, it's a it's good corny bad. rap. But and also, it, it, I, sometimes some of the tropes that sometimes go along with sort of that. Um, that it's sometimes it gets a the little corniness. stereotypical to me. Like I, 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 sometimes I'm rolling my eyes just because I'm like, all right, this guy's kind of a nerd. It seems like, mm-hmm. <laughs> but then sometimes I'm like, I sometimes don't like some of these just generic, like who's making the laws on your child support sort right. of uh, claims. I don't know. It's like I get what you're doing, and that's true. Obviously, that's something that affects the black community. But that affects all communities, first of all. Like, it's mm-hmm. not like it really affects the black community, I don't know, more. It, 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 it just adds to that corniness. It's just corny to me a little mm-hmm. bit. But, and it's like, I don't know, is who's listening to this and like, like, this is good. And like holding their kid in their car as they're like, uh, like I'm not going to vote. It doesn't matter. Dude, and I was like, um, bumping this in my car this morning. You should have seen me. So, speak, so speaking of which, this it seems like you need this song because yes, you are you have voted, and it seems like you te- you tend to vote, mm-hmm. but you you seem to be the most uh, cynical voter. You seem to hate mm. every aspect of voting, mm. and the and uh, it's a the, real bold statement there, Jared. Every time we bring up the candidates, you're like, oh, they're all stupid idiots. Yep. <laughs> Did yep. you vote for Joe Jorgensen and whatever Spike or whatever the guy with yeah, Spike, Spike at his, Spike in his Spike middle Lee name and, and That's Joey Spike. Jordison. <laughs> <laughs> no i uh kanye omari west is that who yeah you voted that's, for? that's who i voted for yes uh arnold schwarzenegger is vp do you see the tweet where someone tweeted i'm not going to make the same mistake i made in 2016 and they wrote in hillary clinton and they're on their ballot <laughs> oh geez oh man oh man um i i don't know i guess i'm cynical because i think for the most part we really only have one or two choices in in the u.s you know when it comes to voting for the most part we definitely have two choices i mean i mean yeah but sometimes it's such a landslide that it's like oh yeah locally i guess right but it's it's never a landslide or it's rarely a landslide like uh and if it is it maybe like that's how just how it goes but it's rarely like it's rare that um presidential elections i feel like are won by landslides right no like the last one was certainly close there was that whole issue with uh the hanging chads and george bush or whatever and Mm -hmm. what uh i don't remember the other guy was with al gore Gore. or whatever al gore yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh that was uh that was super close and some might say that that one you know and so it's uh, and so i i'm uh, like i i don't know i i feel like i just i disagree a little bit And now maybe locally, sometimes I see why, like sometimes people like don't vote because they're like, oh, I live in Seattle or I live in um, New York City or Los Angeles. New York. And there's no way we're not going to go blue. So there's no point in voting. Blue no matter who, baby. I hate those people. I hate those people who are either always all red or always all blue. Uh, The people who, I don't know. I just, I think it's funny when people I feel like you'll never find me voting for a Republican. Not even like a more of a uh, more center Republican, maybe more moderate. What sort of? Rep- I, I can't imagine any sort of like a no, John Kasich type of dude. No, because I no because I I would I think I'd want you to go. I'd want someone that would go further than that. So I'd imagine that whoever is on the left might not be better. But I don't know. Mm. I no no. I because that's not what I want. I feel like that's not what I want. What do you want, Jared? No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't want. I don't want to live in a conservative. Uh, and I don't want to live in a conservative city, uh, country. I don't mm. want to live in. Um, I don't. I like. I, I rather go left than conservative any day. So any. So there's if if this there's no way that there if if John Kasich 
who seems like a fine person, sure, whatever. But if there's someone that is willing to make more uh, more left leaning policies than that, mm-hmm. then I would rather have that person. And I imagine if John Kasich is running, then there would be someone that would be mm-hmm. more left leaning than that. I, and and this is and and this is coming from someone that plans on making a lot of money and and plan. I don't know. I I I I, I don't know. I, I don't. So I don't fully agree with those those people that are just mm. con, uh, financial conservatives. I, I, I don't agree. Because I, I don't understand how someone can disregard... What if there was a good libertarian candidate that was about... Well, all right. right, let's. Let, I would love to see that. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I would have loved to see that. Or, but or, I, what if, or what if there was like a Green Party candidate that was still left, but that's not a Democrat? That's my point. Is that yeah? But I think I, I think I wouldn't people, vote for that person because I, I know that that person is not going to be elected. And what, what if it's a smaller local election though? Then the then the chance mm. might be a little bit higher. Maybe actually. I would. Maybe I would locally. But see that that's what I mean though, Jared. Is I think I think there's so many people out there that are these diehard Democrats, and I'm not saying you are, but I'm saying there's a lot of people out there who are diehard d- Democrats. No, because I don't think Democrats go far enough. By the way, I, like I, 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 I would agree with you. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, I, and I, yeah, so I, I'm definitely not a diehard Democrat. Yeah, but American I would left that over. is not the same thing as the left around the world. That's for sure. Sure, that's what they always say. Like yeah. our left is like a it's like kind of a center conservative or, or center yeah. conservative over there. Yeah, right. <laughs> Which yeah, yeah. We we it's funny though. We're very liberal in certain ways in the U.S. and then very conservative in other ways. Um, so it's interesting how that works. Uh, yeah, um, for sure. Um, well, Jared, what else would you like to add about the election today? Um, I, I this is going to be a weird couple of months, bro. Yep. <laughs> either yeah, either way, regardless I get what happens. So, how do you feel about people making predictions? I mean, making predictions is fun as all. And oh, all. dude, I've never been more afraid to make a prediction than than. I, I mean, I was pretty afraid last uh, f- or four years ago to make a prediction, mm-hmm. but I, I but. After four after four years ago, I'm like I I don't I I'm not making any I don't I don't want to make any predictions I don't want to look make, like an idiot I can make a lot of predictions here Jared and uh, I'm fine looking like an idiot so right. let me uh, Ooh, let me okay. let me let me make a couple <laughs> um, and I'll probably yes. I'll probably be wrong but I'll I'll make them anyways number one uh, I I think because of this Tecumseh's curse that we talked about. Uh, not that I wish ill on any candidates or any people out there, but whoever gets in next, I think uh, I don't know if they'll make it all the way past their term. Um, I don't think that's so the most shocking prediction. prediction. Uh, okay. I, I think I think I, I think I'm with you on that. Okay. And I think actually, the Democratic Party. I feel like they kind of know that. Yeah. Well, I think they're they might be a little. I wouldn't say hoping for it, but I think they're. <laughs> I mean, I've I've heard I've heard some people hey, refer to. Chad's Chad's opinions are his own. Okay, I <laughs> don't. Hey, these aren't my was... opi- these aren't my opinions. This is just some some junk I've heard. Mm. Um, you know that that some people uh, are, are viewing Alex this Jones as that, right, uh... <laughs> right, cracking jokes or trolling or whatever. But um, my other prediction, though, Jared, is I think regardless who wins, mm-hmm. um, I think regardless who wins i think things are going to get worse before they get better for a while and then hopefully they will get better again worse with what everything economy is going to get worse covid's going to get worse everything's going to get yeah, worse yeah i feel like there's no way cuz i feel like if trump gets elected it's going to continue on with, with what we're seeing right yep. now yep but i feel like if he doesn't the conservatives are going to double down Triple yep. down, quadruple yep. down. Yep. On, <laughs> yep. And, and I feel I like, they're gonna, like they're going to go out in, in, in higher numbers than they already mm-hmm. are. I, I don't know. I feel like there's going to be some sort of like essentially a protest. I, and also, I'd be I, very I interested worry, to see why. I worry do, there will be violence. There's definitely going to be violence. I mean, we've already heard about plots that have been foiled. There have been a few right. plots. Remember that there, there are a few plots recently that have been foiled, not including the Wolver the Wolverine, right? Uh, the, the white Steven Wolverines, <laughs> right? But, um, right. But there have been a few other plots that have been foiled more recently. And, well, but see, um, that's what I'm saying, dude. With this Tecumseh's curse, I think especially if Biden gets in, I think there's enough yeah. crazy people on the right that might try something. Why do journalists keep asking? Trump, mm-hmm. if he's going to peacefully leave the office if he gets elected out, what we're like? What, why did that right. start? I don't understand why that started. Because I it's got, like I got two theories for you, Jared. Two theories for you. It's pretty straightforward. I think number one, um, it is it's a media ploy. It you think people a, just made up an angle? 
Yep. To, I uh, think I think it's a media drum up some. Um, yeah, because no. it's like I don't understand where that came from. Right. Why wouldn't he? When, I think. And how I is think, that possible mm-hmm. that all of a sudden all of the like forces at B in the government, besides for him, would right. just like band behind him in some sort of coup of the yeah, White House? I I, <laughs> like, I mean, it, it look, it could. I'm not happen. saying it's not impossible, right. but that's such, right. that's such like a drastic example of what right. could happen. Why do you like? Where did that start? All of a sudden, I think it's a where, media ploy. Yeah, and I, can I see think. That. I can I that. think also what happened was the uh, Trump party realized uh, or the his when I say party, I mean like his people realized sure. that uh, I think that does appeal to that kind of machismo that a lot of his mm-hmm. voters like. You know what I mean? So it, then it works for kept, both sides because then he right. can he can make a narrative out of it, too. Right. Exactly. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people like Trump is he, quote unquote, doesn't show weakness, which I think is a load of BS. But that's he, a different topic for another. <laughs> don't let another the, the episode. don't let the virus dominate you. That's Just right. get, get in your helicopter uh, at right. the, at the yourself me- full of as, remdesivir and all the other <laughs> in stuff, Regeneron. You know? right. As soon as you're uh, tested positive, have mm-hmm. a uh, team of the top doctors in the world at right. your ready. And right. then just have your helicopter in your yard, ready to go. Exactly. It's uh, easy. It's very easy. <laughs> Fly to some of the greatest uh, doctors in the world and mm-hmm. just stay there preemptively, um, even before symptoms hit. Right. Uh, and uh, you'll be fine. Don't let it dominate you. Exactly. Well, Jared, let me uh, let me finish off with my doom and gloom, though. Uh, you wanted my predictions. Mm, yes, 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 yes. Um, but you know what's funny, Jared, is all of my I predictions. I assume at the end, the final prediction uh-huh. is going to be who's going to win. That's going to be the final prediction out of oh, all these you predictions. Really, you really want me to go there, huh? All right, I'll go there. That's the final one, there. though. You have more predictions all first. Right, I, I do. You got to so, end on a high so note. A, a, as I said, as I said, I think things are going to get a lot worse. And mm-hmm. sadly, I think. Uh, and and now look, people. These are just my crazy ideas here. These are not rooted in any like empirical analysis or data. But I, I worry that there might be a, uh, a housing crash. I think if hmm. if enough businesses go under, if enough people uh, aren't able to make rent, I mean the amount of people out there that are also landlords that that use their tenants money to pay off mortgages is more than you would probably that most people are aware of. So, so you're I concerned think, about a second economic shutdown. Yes. That's more dr- more uh, Yes. And and if COVID gets worse, well, I shouldn't say if. I think when it gets worse, um, mm-hmm. so many Americans they're sick of this. You know, we're seven, eight months into this pandemic now. And I, oh, I didn't even <laughs> I didn't even realize that sick of this. But yeah, but they're ti- they're sick and tired of the pandemic. And uh, and so I think if we go into lockdowns, that's going to cause a lot of economic issues. Um, and uh, and so yeah, but yeah. so Jared, you wanted me to end on my prediction: who's going to win? You're not going to be happy to hear this, but I think Trump wins it. Um, I hate to say it, but I think you know. I think he's gonna win it. Um, because once again, it's going to be this crazy, ridiculous thing where I think, I think there's going to be some meddling in the elections, and somehow he's going to find a way to win it. Um, I well, it has to be through meddling because for the longest time uh, leading up to this election, I, I would have agreed with you, mm-hmm. like throughout his presidency and all, and all that stuff. Right. But um, just since this whole pandemic has started, like the, th- the how terrible he is has just accelerated. And I think it, it's not preventing. I'm not. I'm not hoping that that's preventing Trump supporters from supporting Trump because mm-hmm. they have no soul already. But I think what it is doing is I. Well, I hope. I guess. What it is doing is energizing more people to vote. Because the problem, once again, is not that Trump people are voting for Trump; is that not enough people are voting? You know, right? And so, and so, um, I mean, it is. I think it is a problem that people vote for Trump too. But that's an unsolvable problem, essentially. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, um, but I think this is the problem that more that not enough people are voting. So, I, so if anything, I, I just feel like people that are that hate Trump but don't vote. Um, like I, 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 it's, it seems I, 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 I'm getting the vibes that enough people are witnessing what's happening and being and to the point where we're getting enough people, enough people will vote. But, mm-hmm. um, so I'm going to say Biden and obviously I'm doing this partially for the suspense of this podcast. Cause obviously mm-hmm. we're going to talk about it, but right. then also I, I do kind of believe that a little bit. And, um, I, I I'm gonna put it this way, I, I I'm 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 my bets on Biden, but 
I'm, I'm <laughs> if 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 we come back uh, in two weeks, at the, I think it would be or uh, whatever, and it is Trump. It's not like I'm going to be like, oh, you know what we should do? Actually, we should plan that episode so we don't so we record on like Wednesday for the episode that comes out on Thursday, so we can. Oh, talk. that's a good idea. But um, good idea. I, I w- like I'm not going to be surprised if it's right. Trump. Let's put it that way. But I, I hope- think. Mm-hmm. I think just he the the level of accelerated terrible that he's been I mm. think is and I think we have seen a lot of I feel like we're going to see enough turnout that'll turn it. I I hope so too Jared. Um but but the reason why I say I think it will be Trump is he lost the popular vote last time sure. and uh, and uh still won it. So we'll but I see. think it I, mm-hmm. And listen, I, I'm not saying that I, I don't I, I think your prediction I like I don't think that's a bad prediction. I don't think that's a crazy right. prediction to think that to, right. to think that he's going to uh, to win going to win. But I think what it is like, it's so down to these um, to these swing states. I mean, the way he's mm-hmm. treated like Whitmer, Michigan, too. Well, Whitmer, well, that's a swing state. Li- you yeah. got to liberate Michigan, Jared. The, liberate the way it. he's treated like the way he's treated Whitmer. I, I feel like there's way I, I don't know. I, I just feel like. I don't know. I, I just can't, I just feel like there's a lot. There's going to be enough activation of people to vote that that that'll that'll swing these swing states because right. really that's all that uh, not matters, but that's what makes the difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and I I hope you're right, but we'll see. So stay tuned, everybody. Yeah, uh, tune in next time to the Untranslatable Podcast, uh, and we'll we'll have to talk more about Borat next episode as well because that's <laughs> definitely something else, Jared. Pleasure um, stuff for sure. But let us know uh, what your thoughts are on the voting process in the United States at untranslatablepodcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Instagram at untranslatablepodcast. You can check out pics, clips. Uh, Jared's been stepping up his Photoshop game, uh, so I definitely <laughs> really appreciate that. So check it out. Also check us out on Twitter, Siva. untranslatable1, the number one, um, for all sorts of great retweets and other stuff. Uh, you know, we got in- info when episodes drop every Monday and Thursday. And lastly, please, five-star reviews on iTunes and Stitcher. Let us know Pleasure how we can stuff. make this podcast better for you. You. So, as we say here at the Untranslatable Podcast, Yekuyame, muchas gracias, shisha, and dosvidanya. And now, Jared, I gotta pack up and sneak my way out of this voting booth. <laughs> Don't want them yeah, to think I've been your, tampering with the results, you know, with your fake press credentials. That's right. <laughs> no, I'm, That's I right. work for I work for CNN. I'm right. just here reporting. You know, I just printed off a little, <laughs> little name tag that said CNN and put it on my, on my flannel. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Came in and they said, where's your camera? And I held up my iPhone and said, it's right here. I got three of them. You see that? Boom. Is it <laughs> yeah, three? This is, is it three yeah, or two? Is, oh, yeah, I only got the two, need. Jared. I'm not I that need. fancy. That's right. <laughs> that is right. You better believe it. You better yeah. believe it. Oh, my gosh, Oh, dude. man. It is crazy how fast this is approaching. I, I am, man, I d- I'm definitely staying yeah. inside the night of the third that might be scarier than halloween right you got you got any uh any ways to protect yourself at home <laughs> yeah i have betsy and marlene <laughs> i'm holding up my fist for everyone listening um yeah. no i actually i told you i've 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 skirted the idea to my partner Sydney of purchasing a firearm. What'd she I, say? I, I always talk about the mossy, the uh, the uh-huh. Mossberg. That if we had a Mossberg, uh, she's not having it. And I not honestly, I can't blame her. Mm-hmm. And I'm not because in theory, mm-hmm. I think I'm a I'm I, th- I think I'm a I'm a no guns person. Okay. But um, because we can get one, I'm also like I mean. But I'll be responsible, right? <laughs> I, I kind of want to get a shotgun. Shoot anyone, unless I have to. Well, that's right. yeah, a Mossberg. That's what I'm. That's right. what I'm thinking too. <laughs> yeah, good to go. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And I tried to put a buyer. I was like, listen, we don't even need bullets. This is for home protection. If they hear that, <laughs> like that, that's that half of the job is done right there. Right. I mean, I, I'd have some. I'd have some ammo just to be safe though, because. Sure, what listen. are you gonna do? Smack them with it? I mean, you could fuck somebody up pretty Baby bad steps. if you hit them with it, though. Baby but. steps, right? Baby steps. That's but yeah, fair. I don't think it's Baby gonna happen steps. as long as I'm in a relationship with her. And really? I, honestly, I'm fine with that because I think in general, I, I I would I prefer to live in a society where guns were uh, more restricted. So 